The boxability is a title that we've given it, and, and the group of people, fantastic people that we work with. Um, it's been a full year now, so it's a celebration evening tonight for boxability. Um, we came up with the name of boxability because the group work on other sessions within the community, they have stitchability, so it's a knock on effect, so that it's familiar. Um, they actually picked the club colours because that's their colour orange, which we work with as well. I was fortunate enough for um, Les McLean to approach me a year ago to come and do an introduction to boxing, basically something for the group to watch uh, over at the uh, community centre. Um, and after doing that session, like an inspiration, it was, it was, it was, uh, it was heartwarming. So I invited them to come to look at a real boxing club to use some of the facilities, which they did. And then the progression from there last year is we, we, we went firm that every Tuesday would be the boxability group. And, and it's just gone stronger and stronger and stronger from there. Yeah, so my name is Les, I'm lead youth worker at Youth Ability, Youth Service C and Barrow. So we're an inclusive youth service for young people with disabilities from ages 7 up to 30. Um, provide lots of activities, life skills, stuff like that. Um, so when we're coming out of COVID, we're looking at, we always look at new ways and how we can engage new young people or some of our existing members um, and try new things out. So we reached out to Jeff. None of our young people had ever done any kind of boxing before. So we invited Jeff and his team along, have a little taste of session. Um, and Jeff absolutely loved it. The kids absolutely loved it. Um, and just seeing the smiles on the faces and just some of the young people that I want to even would entertain boxing up going for it. Some of the disabilities there, I mean obviously I'm not qualified to go into detail, but the basics, some are non-communication, non um, some suffer with, with, with Down syndrome or, or a speech or ADHD or autism or some are in wheelchairs. They all work as a team and, and it works. You've got a mixed group, let's say, of, of all disabilities and all different backgrounds. Some, some, of, the, some of the people that come through, they're all ages, from, from the smaller children to adults, to grown-ups, and some might have carers, some might have parents with them, uh, or members of the family, and they, and they come in. Some just want to go on the backs, but we've also got a team that have been with us that are part of the boxing group, our amateur boxing club. They're, they're ex-boxers or the keep fitters, They've gone through the process, they turn up every Tuesday and what they do as well, they add that extra bit of one-on-one, -on -one, a little bit of pad work, a little bit on the shield, a little bit of correction, but they're spending time with each individual and we also get the opportunity, or I get the opportunity to take a one-on-one -on -one in there with a little bit of pad work and progress our teaching skills. They work on the bags, we do a little bit of footwork, everything oriented around boxing, they, they get trained like a boxer would and, the, and they explain the process so they understand it. And we always finish off with sometimes it's boys versus girls, sometimes it's mixed with a tug of war, which is like the finale for that little bit of strength, there, a little bit of competitive. <laughs> Going forward, if if we uh, incorporate some of when the group first came in a year ago to where they are now, they know stance, they know guard, they know how to move, they progress on the backs, they've got an understanding on boxing. Going forward is, is for me personally, I, I'd like to think that this is, this is tried and tested for a year and it's gone from strength to strength. They don't miss training, they come early, they know the drill, they practice. I think it'd be... A, be fantastic if every single club included a boxability session.